But I'm, I'm sure um, it is. Yeah, somewhere. I was going to say, I'm definitely not. I'm a man about Prairie Village. Okay. <laughs> You've got that going for me. Go. I, I, I go, like, I walk around my neighborhood with my dog. Does that count? Yeah, sure. There it does. That counts. That counts. Uh, it's a beautiful neighborhood. So, uh, there you go. Uh, good, good place to be walking around. Good place. Uh, a good time, I guess I should say, to be a Kansas City Royals fan. They continue. I know they had a three game skid. Uh, they've yet to lose four games in a row this year. Uh, but the three game skid came after an eight game win streak, something that has been like a, basically a, a yellow brick road to a 90 plus wins or at least averaging right around 90 wins other than this weird 62 and 100 they did once in a season that they actually won eight games in a row. So another sign yeah. that says this is for the long haul. And I think we'll just assume that's the case this far in. But is it a team for me? Like I said a lot in 2014, Jeff, that I don't know if they're going to get there, but if they get there, they'll be hell on wheels. They, they, they can make contact and you don't get to see guys that just walk you around the bases in the, in the playoffs. That's going to bode well offensively. That makes them a little bit dangerous offensively. And they have the lights out bullpen to shorten the game. So they looked like a team that if they could get there were a playoff, you know, a team that would be tough in the playoffs. This looks like the opposite. This looks like a team that's built to get there. But I don't know if they can do damage when they get there. So do they need to start thinking about reshaping this team? I don't know if they need to think about reshaping it. I mean, they're 35 and 22. So well, right. that's, that's, yeah, that's a good point. Adding to it or, or polishing some of the rough edges that you need to have polished for the postseason. looking for is augmenting it. And yes, I do think they need to augment this team because I think there are enough holes in it where they would be vulnerable. But I will say this. When we look back at the 2014 and 2015 Royals, we thought that they could be dangerous in the postseason because they made contact, because they ran, because they, they played really good station-to-station, -station, fundamental baseball. They caught it. But, but I don't think anyone was ever scared of their starting pitching in particular. I think if you look at the 2024 Royals, is it me or is their best attribute, aside from Bobby Witt and Salvador Perez, you know, being two top 10 MVP guys right now, is it not their starting pitching? Is it that the thing that if they're going to make the playoffs is going to take them on a deep run? It, it is, but it's not the kind of starting pitching. It's not Schilling and, and Randy Johnson. Even as good as yeah, Seth Lugo's totally been, it's not the where my fear would be is they're going to get in against guys that work the count, right? You, you're going to lose the, the yeah. quick ABs you get against the guys that don't really know what they're doing. And if Lugo has to come out, he's not going eight consistently right now, right? So if, if, he, if they can get him out of there after five, no. do they have four innings of answers Dude, in the pen? No, not right now. I'll tell you what, though. I was very impressed last night at Seth Lugo's ability to wriggle out of jams. Like, he was in some gnarly situations. There were guys on the bases all night. And, you know, when push came to shove, he executed the right pitch. And I got, it like, one of the best pitches I've seen in baseball all season uh, at the end of that 12-pitch at bat against Max Kepler that running Greg Maddox two-seamer. It, it was actually, I was watching it with my son, and he's like, that's like the 99th percentile Brady Singer pitch right there. Like a 94-mile-an-hour two-seamer that starts off the plate inside to a left-hander and then just has nasty run back over the plate at the end. It was a gorgeous pitch, a perfectly executed pitch, and it's what he's been doing all season long. And uh, I, I think your point about the better lineups Frankly, uh, it's what the Royals need to test just how good they are and how close they are to being a championship caliber ball club. I do not look at this team right now and think this is a team that's going to go out and win the World Series. I will say this, though. It's a fun team to watch. I, I find myself much more than I have in recent years turning on Royals games at the beginning and not just check it in, like, in the middle of the game to, to see how things are going. No, but watching, you know, innings one through nine. And I got to keep patrol on 30 teams, so there are going to be some nights where the, the Royals just aren't on the schedule. But more often this year, they have been there because they warranted it. Uh, they look a lot better when uh, Nelson Velasquez is hot. I'll say that. Yes, they do. That, that certainly yes, makes do. the lineup longer, and and that helps. And – you know, so from that standpoint, 
but but I mean, he's softball guy. Let's be honest. I mean, he's a DH, right? If you construct your yeah, team and, going- and that's you know what that is like. That's if if you have six other hitters on your team in whom you are confident as Matt Quattrara as manager. I feel like Nelson Velasquez is is great as like your number seven option. The the problem is the Royals don't have that right now. Um, They have Witt and they have Perez. And they have, when he's healthy, Vinny Pasquantino, whose uh, numbers have been okay. They haven't been what they could be, but I I still think Vinny Pasquantino is dangerous. Um, I think you can probably reasonably throw Michael Garcia in there. He's not going to ever be an MVP type candidate, but he's a good, solid ball player. Um, and, and I think Michael Massey, the way he's been swinging lately, he, he may actually be option number five there. I, I think there's some, some real stuff in Massey's bat. Uh, but that six guy doesn't exist right now. Uh, and the, that's what you got to go out and acquire. You, you need to get someone, particularly an outfielder. And I just don't know that there are going to be a lot of good outfield options at the deadline this year. And that's my concern that. You know, there's this position uh, that the Royals desperately need, but other organizations need it too, and the supply just isn't very good right now, which makes you wonder about a team like the Tampa Bay Rays. I look at the Rays right now, and if I'm running them, I'm not putting all of my eggs in the 2025 basket, but I'm saying that we've been abjectly mediocre this year. Like, just... Just okay, um, you know, sort of lingering, kind of on the verge of 500, but not quite there. Uh, they're not getting Shane McClanahan, their ace and all-star starter back until next year. They're not getting Jeffrey Springs, who had Tommy John surgery as well, back until, in all likelihood, uh, later in the year, but full strength next season. And they're not getting Drew Rasmussen back uh, for a while either. So the idea that... 2025, when they have those three and Carson Williams and Junior Camonero from the minor league coming up, makes you wonder, would they be open to trading perhaps an outfielder like Randy Rosarena? But has anybody been more lost than Randy or Rosarena? Like in, in, you know, maybe the the answer, the answer, Seren, is no. And that's why if I'm the Royals right now, if I'm Matt Quattraro, who (laughs) knows the Rays organization and has been there seeing Randy or Rosarena at his absolute best, say, hey, this may be an opportunity for us to buy low here. Now there's risk because the guy's batting like 150 and he stunk this year. And and do you trade for someone who, can't put the bat on the ball, generally speaking, no. But the opportunity to get players of Randy Rosarena's talent level do not come along very often. And when they do, maybe you strike at that opportunity and pay more than he's playing right now in order to secure him. Thank you and good afternoon. This is Sam Vaughn for Sam Sports Report. The Florida Panthers are in the Stanley Cup as they win 2-1 to one over the Rangers. Rangers got... Won by Armier de Pinero to make it a one real goal game, but couldn't close with two minutes left to go. In the third period, the Panthers are trying to win. The Florida Panthers have never won a Stanley Cup. The next, the second qualifying team for the NHL Stanley Cup will be today. The conference finals. It'll be the Edmonton Oilers and the Dallas Stars. Edmonton gets a chance to close it at home. Edmonton is up 3-2. to two. Players to watch out for Jason Robertson and Connor McDavid. Face off 7 p.m. TNT. As we said yesterday, we've got the NBA Finals set for the Mavericks and Celtics Thursday. And in the MLB, the Royals will play again today after losing yesterday again. They've lost five out of the last six, seven to three. Alec Marsh and Randy Valquez won the start. The bullpen did not look good again for the Royals. Royals lose seven three. 
Cardinals final six to one. Winner Spencer Torble and loser Sonny Gray. Last night six to one was the final, and the Cubs beat the Reds seven to five. The Royals will come into today. 32 and 25, and the Padres will come at 32 and 29. Michael King will get the tab for the Padres, and Cole Reagans will get the tab for the Royals. Game time 110. The Cubs will play the Reds. Londo. <laughs> pitch for the uh, Reds, and. It didn't get it. Ben Brown will go for the Cubs. Game time, 120 Central. And for the Cardinals and Phillies who play Sunday Night Baseball, at 710, it will be Lance Lynn. And Tijon Walker will go for the Phillies. Game time, 710 ESPN. That's Sam on Sports.